tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software $100 and starting pricing for high-end software $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal buyer's protection guarantee. From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Rootwork, the all-natural foundational black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. This is the 50th anniversary of hip hop and we still have a lot of discrepancies as far as the origins of hip hop, a lot of claims, who did what, who was the first this, who was the this and that and such and such. But at the end of the day, we need a definitive story, all right? And that story can only be told by the founders of this culture. Like everything was being driven and influenced by young, black American culture, like the slang, the style of dress, the initial uh, music that we chose. You look at uh, all the boroughs, you got, you know, money making Manhattan and money earning Mount Vernon and Crooklyn. The Bronx was the boogie down Bronx. We was partying up there. I am Coke LaRock, the first MC of hip hop. First cat to pick the mic up. I introduced rapping to the turntables because when I came with it, nobody in the world was doing it. I'm right after Rudy Ray Moore. They want to come in the mix, they want to say, I was, we started. No, no you didn't, no you didn't, no you didn't. What can't be known as hip hop was solely an African American creation. What would you get out of some Jamaican toast? What is that? I've never heard of a rapper use a Jamaican toast or a Jamaican flu as a rhyme. I've never heard of it, and I don't know where that myth came from. My name is Legendary Kane Trixie from the Bronx, BX from the West Side. I am the first break dancer. And that narrative that hip hop has had three founding fathers that's been rolling for the last almost 30 years, which isn't true. You don't have just three people who created hip hop. Hip hop was created by a number of different people. I am the grandfather, the godfather of the graffiti culture. I am the first element of hip hop. The roots of hip hop being Jamaican, absolutely false. My name is MC Shah Rock. I am a founding member of the MC slash rap culture. Cassette tapes was the internet of our time. It just traveled around by hand. Well, I know for a fact that the B-Boy stand started from the gods, the five percenters that would be at the jams back in the days who were acting as security. If they get the real truth of how it all was created, then so many lies would not be able to be in existence. What's up, guys? I'm here. This is me, Tariq, and you're on Tariq Radio Live, ladies and gentlemen. We're here. I got on my uncle hat and my intellectual glasses, and I am here, ready to chop up game. Glad to have everybody in here, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have the family in here. You just saw the trailer for Microphone Check. And before we get started, let me get everybody, number one, to retweet this 
Let everybody know that we're live right now. Let me get a nice, good retweet. Let everybody know we're live. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you have not already subscribed before. Shout out to people in the chat room. Sage Laflame, love you too, beloved. Shout out to Nikki the God, Michael Wharton, Janique, <clears throat> everybody in the room. Glad to have y'all in here. Um, and by the way, we only have, how many days is it until the, it's the last round. We, we only got five days. I thought we had six, but family, for the Kickstarter, for the new movie, um, Microphone Check, this is where we are. We at 126, 126K. We got to get to 180. Now remember, if you see this on the bottom, it's all or nothing. All right here on the bottom. All right, I'm trying to, there you go. This project will only be funded if it reaches its goal by next Saturday, Saturday, November 4th. It's all or nothing. Meaning we got to get all of this or nothing. Like the movie will be greatly delayed if we do not reach the goal. So it's an all or nothing thing, family. So we need to get, what, a little over, what, 50K? A little over 50K by Saturday. Now, we can do that, ladies and gentlemen. We can do that. All right, so we got five days to get to that 180. So, family, if everybody can get involved and put a little sum on it so we can get to that goal, that would be great. That, that's a power move. And we got to keep making these power moves. So we got it. I, I have confidence in the family because I know how great we are. And we always get stuff done like we're supposed to. So, yeah, shout out to everybody who's going to get down on it. Much respect to the family. Oh, uh, man. Microphone check. And also, you can go to microphonecheck.com. My nephew. I got to talk about the situation with my nephew. What's up, everybody in Detroit? Shout out to everybody in the D. And uh, I've been talking about this on my um, on my social media for a couple of days out in Detroit. My, um, a lot of my family's still out there. Uh, my nephew, my 30-year-old nephew, my sister's son, is my biological nephew. You know, some people say, you know, oh, that's my nephew, that's my cousin. No, this is my biological nephew. The kid looks just like me and, you know. So that's my nephew. My nephew got caught up in a situation with this chick and her her baby dad. And I got to kind of watch what I say. I put up some stuff on my social media. Um, some of the investigators were hollering at my sister saying that they don't want too, too much information like that put out because we put the suspect's information out. The, the media out there, they're not even naming the suspect or anything, so... Um, and they're, you know, I, I, they're protecting my nephew's identity by not releasing his name. Um, but he survived the shooting. He got shot a few times by some dusty Negro, some dusty Hayden Buster, basically mad because my nephew was um, messing with his baby's mom. All right. And, you know, and, and that's, you know, when my nephew gets better, boy, me and him going to have such a long talk when he gets out that hospital. Thank goodness he's he's going to be good. You know, he's he's still sedated. They still have him sedated right now. But, boy, I'm going to have a good talking to my nephew. Boy, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, ticked off at the situation. But, boy, my nephew should know better. Certain folks you don't mess with. Let me talk to y'all, y'all youngins out there, man. If y'all don't stop messing with some of these people, man, some of these chicks with these old dusty niggas, man, my, my, my nephew up here messing with this chick and her baby dad is a cupcake and simp. And the baby dad up here following my nephew around on the sneak and just pulled up on him on some surprise attack shit because he's a buster. Yeah, old cupcake and nigga, man. 
we got these deadly simps out here, man. We got deadly ass killer simps out here right now. And and, and my, my issue is with, and this is the thing, this is the thing that's rubbing me and the family the wrong way. And, and I thank y'all for the condolences, guys. I really thank y'all because we need them. You know, we, my, my nephew, man, my, I talked to my sister. She was like, man, his heart stopped beating for a minute. The, the hospital there thought that he was gone. We were like, damn, but, you know, he, he pulled through, which is good. And, you know, he's still in recovery. So they got him sedated for a few days. And, uh, again, I might be going out there this week um, to kind of check on them and just to, you know, just to make sure things are good. But, um the thing is, when we see situations like this happen, the police are really dragging their ass about this. You understand? Somebody said my mic is low. Is my, can you guys hear me? Hold on. Somebody said, hold on. Because it might be one person saying this. Hold on. Let me double check and see if it's not the same person. Is this the same person saying the mic is low? The mic is fine. The mic is fine, dude. You shouldn't be listening to me on a flip phone. I don't know how you can get apps on a flip phone. All right. But listen, my, my thing is this. Dude, but yeah, aside from messing with these chicks out here with these dusty, with dusty nigga energy around them, I'm good. Okay. That's the thing. That, that burns me up and just the police the way they're handling it the way the, the way they're handling it ugh. but before i go into that but fellas listen listen when y'all get around women when y'all get around some of these women man you got to take into account the types of niggas that they've messed with before and some of these chicks ain't worth it man some of them ain't worth it. A lot of them ain't worth it. And women too. Women, dusty niggas ain't worth it either. I'm not trying to beat up on no women. This, you know, I'm not trying to beat up on nobody but nigga. Um, when you were a young dude, my, my, my nephew was a young, good looking dude. And some of y'all young brothers out there, y'all stay away from some of these riffraff chicks with dusty niggas around them. It ain't worth it. This chick got a couple of kids by this dusty nigga. Um, dude, it ain't worth it. You know, people oftentimes online, they kind of give the single mothers, you know, these chicks with a few kids. Because one kid is, okay, somebody might have had a mistake. But you got a couple of kids and you're a young chick and you're single. That's something else. All right? If you're a young chick and... You got a couple of kids and there's a dusty baby daddy lurking around. There's a reason why a lot of these cats online, people make it seem like they're hating. There's a reason why people say, hey, man, you got to kind of leave them alone. Yeah, this shit got a couple of kids, by I, I think, by this same nigga. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you from family experience, guys, the shit ain't worth it. This, the shit our family's going through now, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. I'm so upset with my nephew as far as that. That's one thing. I hope my, ne my nephew's going to get better. But boy, I'm going to have a talking with him when he gets better. That ain't worth it. My nephew comes from a great family. He's a suburban kid. My nephew don't, man, I'm still, the hell would my nephew mess around with chicks like that? I, I, I'm, let me not knock this woman because there's still an investigation and I don't know the lady. Let me, let me be, I don't know the, I don't know the girl. I don't want to seem like I'm here knocking this woman because this, this is an open investigation going on. Let me be, let me be very, you know, cool. I'm not, not, I don't know this girl from a can of paint. I don't know her, but I know Dusty. Is a dusty nigga. The reason why people say, "Hey, man, a lot of these women with a whole bunch with a with a couple of kids at a young age, you should avoid," because the dustiness that comes with that. There's always a dusty vibe that comes with it. Hold on, I didn't see a mosquito. Hold on, I'm about to give one of these mosquitoes the business. Oh, I got my zapper on the ass. Hold on, one second. 
get my zapper popping. But family, that that's what it is, man. A lot of a lot of them kind of bring a dusty energy, man. When they got these little weird old dudes that they're getting knocked up by, there's the mindset that comes with that, man. You understand? Yeah, I want to say some stuff. You know, I want to say things, but the the fact that there's an open investigation going on in the damn attempted murderer because the dude tried to kill my nephew. My nephew damn near died because of a dusty, nothing to lose, simp ass nigga. You dig? My my guy's out of here. And my nephew's doing great. He was doing great for himself. Fellas, if y'all got stuff popping, get away from these folks who ain't really got nothing to lose. You dig? When you're around people who ain't got nothing to lose, man, you know, that puts you in unnecessary danger. The, the women and the dudes. Like, if you were a chick out here messing with dusty dudes, she ain't got nothing to lose if something happens to you. And a lot of times, brothers, when, 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 when weird shit happens to a lot of these dudes in the streets, man, there's always some... Some some chick who done brought some bullshit energy around. Ninety eight percent of this shit, man. You can always see some chick that done brought some bullshit energy around. It's always a nigga around the wrong chick. You know, I know it ain't my nephew's fault, but damn, I know it's not his fault. When you're a young dude, the little women are choosing up on you. You you messing with this broad, messing with that broad. Um, sometimes the dudes that they got around them, um, you don't need that energy and it's not even worth it, man. It's really not worth it. It's not worth these being around chicks with niggas around them who ain't got nothing to lose. You understand? When my nephew got hit out there in Southfield. They got him, they hit him out there in Southfield. You know? But, but, my thing is this. My thing is just the way the police is handling everything. Well, the Detroit police, the Southfield police, or whichever agency it is, they're very drag ashes. They're, they're dragging ass. They're dragging ass heavy. Um, we, we're trying to, you know, get them to be, you know, let us know what's going on. They're, you know, we're trying to get them to let us know what's popping, to get up on it. I mean, damn. You know, we... we have an idea. I say we have an idea, but we know. But we have an idea who the person is, who the main suspect is. And this ain't no criminal mastermind. Just go get this nigga. Um, they're sitting up here dragging ass. See what happens. They give these people an opportunity to get the hell up out of Dodge. You know, the, the way you drag ass, this dude can run up to Canada or something. You know, Canada's right up there by Detroit. You can just hop over that water and, and ease up out the country real quick. The way they're dragging ass. You know? So, you know, we really want them to get on it. And that just shows, man, how a lot of racist things are allowed to happen and racism comes by inaction. You have a lot of these agencies out here who, when it comes to a crime being committed against a black person, even by if it's by another black person, doesn't matter, just the inaction preys and it goes into the systematic anti-blackness. It's like when something happens to a black person, let's just drag our ass. Let's just kinda, you know, we'll get to it when we get to it. The foot dragging starts. Because it, what happens is, if we handle it, if we have to handle it ourselves, then that too becomes black on black crime again. You know, that becomes another black on black crime statistic if we go out there and um, get at dusty niggas for doing little funny style stuff. And oftentimes that happens, man, when we see crime that happens among black people. It's allowed to go on, and it's not thwarted by anybody. They don't really thwart it. They don't really um, 
make it a priority to do anything about it. You know, we got police agencies all in black neighborhoods. Police agencies are watching our every moves, but they can never stop crimes against us. They can never protect us from crimes. Notice the only people that law enforcement seems to bash down on are innocent black people. It's the benign neglect thing. Yeah, just like the Jeffrey Dahmer effect. They knew Jeffrey Dahmer was targeting black people. They just didn't do anything about it. So the dusty niggas out here targeting black people, why don't they do anything about it? If you talk about black on black crime all the time, white society, you guys have all the resources in the world. These police agencies have billions of dollars. Yet they don't thwart nor really solve too many crimes that happen in black society. That's why we're trying to get a reparations thing going so that we can have the same thing that some of the red Native American tribes have. They have their own police agencies. We need the same thing. We need to have a, a sovereign entity set up the way they have it. Yeah? Yeah, they let the riffraff niggas run amok in black society. They're not moving a muscle to do anything to them. You know? They let them run amok. They're not doing anything. And then they act like these guys are just these criminal masterminds. So I'm telling you from experience, when you see situations where such and such person got shot or a black person got shot here or there, and they're looking for the suspect, if, if the community knows anything, here's a tip line. In the media, they're, they're doing this thing in the case of my, my nephew. Some of the media um, um, sources, and let me play some of them. Let me, they're being vague as hell. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me try to play one. All right, here's one media thing. Let me see what this one is. And they're very vague in these, these media reports. Okay, this was one of the um, stories about the situation. And they're extremely vague. And I understand they're not releasing my relative's name. I understand that. But they know who the suspect is, or one of the suspects, or who we think the suspect is. Hold on one second. There's an advertisement on here, and I'm waiting for the advertisement to go off. Hold on. All right. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Hold on. All right. All right. Here we go. Where, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Black that's left one man in critical police are investigating a shooting at an apartment complex that's left one man in critical condition. Fox News Charlie Langton joins us from the scene now with the very latest. Charlie. We have a man in critical condition after being shot and the suspect is on the run. I'm in Southfield, 8 Mile and Lasser area. About 3.30 early Friday morning, Southfield police get a call that multiple shots were uh, heard from this apartment complex. It's the heights of Southfield, again, 8 Mile and Lasser. When the Southfield police arrived, they found a man had been shot multiple times. They did identify the man as being 30 years old from Granville. But what he was doing here, we don't know. And then the attention turned to the suspect. Don't know. Southfield police told... Yeah, they do know. They know. They know. Two vehicles away. They are asking anyone, if they have any information about this early morning shooting, to give them a call. We don't know a lot of information as to the circumstances that led up to the shooting, but the man was taken to the hospital, the victim, and he is now in critical condition after suffering multiple gun shots. Again, if you have any information, give Southfield Police a call. Yeah, we got information and they know. The security around here was very tight. They would not allow any media to go into the apartment complex. So I get now listen to that. The security is tight. And I was talking to my sister today about where's the surveillance video? How did the damn shooter get in the complex? Yeah, you see, they got they got security gates in the whole nine. And we're all still looking for any information. Again, that suspect, though, is still on the run. All right. Now, as you see, this is a very secure apartment complex. 
They got cameras all around. I was just talking to my sister about this this earlier, my nephew's mother. Big. So they got cameras all over this place. So they know. They know. Yeah? They know. Yeah? So, and I, where's the... Where's my Facebook page? Hold on one second. Let me see something. So they know who the dude is. And all of that. If you know something, give us a call. We're trying to stop it. Nah, that's cap. They know who this dude is. They know exactly who the dude is. All right. But that just goes to show, man. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully he's going to be all right. Um... But yeah, they they allow this stuff to go on. They pick and choose, and they they know what's going on, and they allow this stuff to go on. Um, case in point, there was another situation down in Texas where they had this dude doing pranks, where he is um, running. He he made a couple of videos where he ran up, allegedly ran up and sucker punched some people, hit them in the back of the head for YouTube or social media clout. Now, let me say this. Now, these are propaganda videos. These are propaganda videos. This is part of the knockout game propaganda that they use to justify harming black people. Now, look at this case here. Now, I think this is organized propaganda in order to justify harming us. So this is the headline. A teen admits to randomly sucker punching strangers at a Texas park for social media attention. Everybody makes mistakes. A teenager admitted randomly punching unsuspecting victims. So he's running around here punching random white folks in the back of the head. All right. He's running around punching random white people. Now look at this. Oh, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. I don't know. No ads. Hold on. Let me take this out. I don't want to... No loud ass ads. Hold on. Find it. Hold on. Damn. Yeah, I don't want. How do I mute this shit? Hold on, man. YouTube is blocked if you send it. Okay. Okay. I don't want to play no ad, man. Damn. I don't want to play that loud ass ad. Okay. I wanted to play. The video of the dude. Hold on, let me let me try something because I don't want to get a copyright strike playing no damn ad. All right, hold on, hold on one second. One try second, it. One second, one second. Oh, there we We're go. learning more about one of those social media pranks that is hardly funny. A 19-year-old runs up on two unsuspecting people and sucker punches them in the back of the head. Yeah, this happened in Cyprus, and the video, of course, getting a lot of attention with hundreds of comments and reactions. Tonight, our Jason Miles found and talked to the young man behind the stunt. Jason, what was his response tonight? Well, he's regretful. Honestly, I didn't expect him to answer the door, much less come out and talk. But tonight he says he regrets the behavior so many are now condemning online. Not far from peaceful Wortham Park, where he's accused of randomly punching strangers. Do you regret it? Yes, yes I do. 19-year-old Alfred Lewis spoke with me about how he feels about it now. You know, I just made a mistake and everybody makes mistakes. This is the video in question, first shared with KHOU 11 via the Next Door app. In it, you can clearly see Lewis striking a man in the head from behind before he turns around in shock. I know like from the video, all you see is like the bad part about it, but um, what people didn't see was that I shook his hand after <coughs> and how I had gave the man a hug. That is something we cannot verify, nor can we confirm that another man seen in the video getting punched and grabbed later left on good terms, according to Lewis. I really didn't expect for it to just go so left, you know. I told Lewis that law enforcement is investigating the incident, something his mother and father were also aware of. And your mom's probably disappointed. Yeah, she is. Lewis said the harsh reaction to the video. Notice they're not showing his parents. Video will make him rethink his behavior and hopefully be a lesson for others. Before you go out and you do anything that you feel is 
bad or that could look bad, make sure like people know or just don't do it at all. Okay. Probably good advice. And tonight I'm told the Harris County Sheriff's Office Violent Crimes Division now taking the lead in this investigation, but they may need the cooperation of the complainants or the guys you saw in that video getting punched. This is cap. I, I, this is propaganda, guys. I don't believe this is genuine whatsoever. That's propaganda. I don't believe that. Number one, somebody said he's a tether. They said that's a tether. That, that area has a lot of tethers, which, yeah. They didn't show his parents, and I know his parents probably got an accent. Um, let me tell you something. If that was genuine, that sounds like something that the police and the media set up as a form of propaganda. Because if this dude really went out here socking up white people, do y'all know they would have locked this fool up? If this dude was running around here socking up random white people on video, they don't need the cooperation of anybody. They would have locked him up already. He would be in jail already. He wouldn't be giving interviews. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just realized I was tripping. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's propaganda, Cheo. We got a white supremacist in here. Yeah, it's propaganda because, yeah, a, a nigga running around here assaulting white people. Yeah, you don't interview him at his house. Yeah, you don't interview him at his damn house, fool. Yeah. We've seen SWAT teams get run down on brothers for doing less than that. Nah, yeah, that ain't normal. That ain't normal at all. You, you're you assaulting people, and now you're doing interviews in front of your house? Man, stop it. They would have arrested him if he was really, really socking people up. This is propaganda. Yeah, you open the door. Hi, guys. Yeah, I'm young. I didn't know any better. You know, I'm real sorry that I was sucker punching people. I'm so sorry. You know, sometimes I'm a child and I do childish things. They don't give you an opportunity to explain. You don't assault nobody and then you're doing an interview. That's propaganda. That's to outrage the white people. That's something that's going to outrage white people. Yeah, and he's a tether. He's clearly a tether. That's why nobody knows him. See, they get a lot of tethers to do this stuff. Because if somebody knew him, they'd be like, hey, I know homeboy, homeboy, whoop de whoop whoop whoop. Somebody would say something. So this is somebody that don't nobody know. <clears throat> they get him to do these weirdo ass propaganda crimes. And then you interview him, and then they give some goofy excuse as to why they did it. So now these politicians will use that. Listen, my name is Bob Jones. You got these thugs out here assaulting the good white, I mean, citizens out here. And during interviews, I'm going to get tough on crime. The problem is we're soft on crime. And if we don't get tough on crime, these Negroes will be out here assaulting good white people and doing interviews about it. That's propaganda, man. That's propaganda. The media found his house, but the police couldn't find his house. In that's propaganda all day. Yeah. So yeah, we ain't buying it. So we got to understand how the game works out here, man. There's so many different, we got to understand the chess moves that's involved in systematic white supremacy. It's in all of the things that we see. We think there's some kind of neutral ground for it, even online. That's what we're talking about today. We're talking about digital racism, even online, where things are supposed to be neutral. We even see it online. The digital racism is here. AI racism is here. You know, some of you guys use some of the chat GPT and some of the AI um, apps, and I utilize some of them, and I have conversations with them um, for to get legal understandings about certain things. And let me tell you something, the, the 
the AI programs because I think they col they get their intellect by collecting different types of data online. They collect different forms of data online. So they base their intelligence on the data that's already there that was created by humans. So they go through millions of sources of data in order to come up with their own narratives based on the data they collect. So the, the data is very important. So um, with ChatGPT and all of those, those apps where you can um, get information you talk, you type up stuff about reparations. Um, I was getting some information on reparation strategies, and nigga, the AI started sounding like a damn white supremacist. <laughs> nigga, the AI was white splaining. <laughs> I'm trying to get some data on reparation strategies from a legal standpoint, and nigga, the the AI robots started sounding like Richard Spencer. <laughs> so they programmed the, the, the AI robots, you know, you, you, you let them talk, a, a, you let them talk long enough. They get to sounding like the damn all right. <laughs> yeah. Nigga. Yeah. Yeah. You, you talk to them about some reparations. We'll see who you see who really programmed them. You say, hey, um, hey, AI bot, um, what's the best way to um, get reparations for Foundation of Black Americans? How about you get a job? Stop begging, nigga. <laughs> hey, what, what happened? <laughs> they get frustrated and get to talking like white supremacists. Yeah, have you, have you tried it too? Yeah, you start talking about reparation strategies and then the AI starts telling you how it, you ain't going to get it, how it's too hard. Like, well, there has to be some political will to do it. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, AI? Hold on, AI, you explaining. <laughs> like, AI, what do we need to do? Uh, what type of program can we do to bring to Congress about um, a reparations package? That will be difficult because there has to be a historic context and there has to be some other programs, possibly education funding. No, AI, no, y'all, no, Chad A. No, we, what other strategies? We want to... <laughs> yeah, you tried it too. Yeah, the chat, GB, it be splaining, don't it? It be splaining. It's supposed to be neutral. Yeah, chat, GPT, it's supposed to be completely neutral. But when it's talking about some money, then it starts talking like a white supremacist. <laughs> like chat, GPT. Well, there's other precedents, chat, GPT, um, that other groups, they've got reparations, how can foundational black Americans use the same precedent for reparations as some of these other groups? Response, well, what about black on black crime? <laughs> Hold on, you explaining again. That nigga, I, chat GBT be explaining, dude. When you start talking about us getting some money, boy, it start plebiscite, yeah, it start doing plebiscite babbling. It starts plebiscite babbling. <laughs> Let me try with Alexa. Hold on. Oh, let me try Siri. Let me try with the Siri app. Hold on. Hey, Siri. Mm -hmm. What are the best strategies for black people to get reparations from the U.S. government? I found this on the web. Oh, Siri, can you explain to me, Siri? Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> you know everything else, Siri. Hold on. I don't have an answer for that. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I can't compute. Now you can't say nothing, Siri. Siri. Hey, Siri. Can you explain what would be the best strategy to get reparations verbally? Okay, can you read it out, Siri? Hey, Siri, can you read it out? Whom? 
There's nothing to read. Now this motherfucker's malfunctioning. Now, this thing talks any other time. Now it's malfunctioning. It ain't got nothing to say now. <laughs> hey, Siri. Mm -hmm. What time is it right now? Man. So yeah, it couldn't it couldn't give an answer. You tried it with Google, they did the same thing. Yeah, all of a sudden the, the AI it gets confused when it comes to us getting some money. They don't know what to do. Oh, they can tell you everything. Well, um, hey um AI, how do I um create a stem cell? Well, you go, you go get some science labs, and then you get this, and then you get some mercury, and then you get some iodine, and then you get some boric acid, and they'll tell you the whole thing. Yeah, hey Siri, how do we get reparations? Yeah. Huh? Huh? I am not working. You need to charge your battery right now, nigga. <laughs> your battery is at 3%. <laughs> now you blew a fuse when it, the digital racism is there. Oops. Hey, hey Siri, how do we get reparations? Oops, your phone has a virus. I can't talk. Okay. I found this on the web for how do I get reparations up your phone has a virus. Check it out. Oh, stop it, Siri. <laughs> stop it. Now, Siri, hey, Siri, how come you can't give an answer on how to get reparations? Hold on. Hey, Siri. Uh-huh. Why can't you give an answer on how to get reparations? Oh, Lord, it gets real quiet. They don't know what to say now. <laughs> but, but the digital racism is here. You know, they It's not neutral, um, even online. And I, and I talked about Wikipedia before. Wikipedia acts like some kind of neutral entity where they have these um, suspected white supremacist editors there that will pick and choose what sources they'll use and they go against their own rules by having a bias towards different subjects based on their own racism. Yeah. Here on YouTube, there was a lawsuit against YouTube recently talking about how black content creators are oftentimes penalized by their free speech. And they threw that case out. You dig? Um, we see some of the policing apps that's supposed to be neutral. These policing apps that do face recognitions, we've seen several situations where these facial recognition technologies got the wrong black person. We've seen situations where these um, digitally run self-driving cars disproportionately hits black people. Black people get hit by these damn cars all the time. Yeah. Yeah, Facebook is very good at that. The algorithms that they push, they try to blame it on algorithms. Like with black content creators, we get shadow banned all the time. A lot of times we get shadow banned. White content creators, they signal boost their stuff, they make it available, they push the algorithms so that their messaging can be spread far and wide, whereas our messaging is shadow banned, even though we have a big audience, it's big because people know where to find us. They know how to find us, but a lot of times y'all don't even know when I go live, some of y'all don't even get the notification. A lot of times when I go live, some people say, hey man, I didn't even get a notification. That's not by accident. You know? That is not by accident. So they they program these things to do the, the, the dirty work for them. These programs are not neutral. So when you hear something about a digital algorithm or whatever, they make it seem like, oh, it's just a computer. It's all neutral. Oh, AI, it's all neutral. Artificial intelligence. No, who's programming it? 
Where is it getting its data from? I had a damn debate with, with AI a few days ago about reparations. Nigga, this thing was splaining away. This thing was splaining so damn heavy. Yeah. About these intangible programs. I'm like, yeah, what are some tangible reparations? Well, there is education programs. There's a minority coalition grant that you can get. No, no, AI. We talking about specific things for us. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of us, man, they shadow ban our stuff. They'll put age restrictions on our stuff. They do that to our good brother, Professor Black Truth, all the time. They've done it to brother Jason Black. And these dudes don't even use profanity. There's literally no reason. Like me, sometimes I get an age restriction because I'll use profanity every now and then. But it ain't even about the profanity. It's about the content. You yeah. So they put age restrictions to kind of thwart the reach of a lot of our narratives. It's never equal. Now, Elon Musk, Elon Musk put this up. He tweeted this earlier because I talked about the, the community notes. We've been talking about community notes that they use on um, Twitter. This is their way to censor black voices because community notes are racially based. We pointed this out several times. The community notes are completely racially based. It's not neutral. Um, this is their way to try to censor black people. Whenever we put something up criticizing white supremacy or criticizing a racial incident, they'll let the white supremacists put a computer, community note under our tweet to so-called bring context to it or to cast doubt on it. They don't let us do that to the white supremacists when they tweet certain things. You dig? When this is a situation involving a black person or a white person, the community notes always favors the white person. Yeah, who writes community notes? Great question. They say anybody can sign up to become a community note contributor. They say anybody can sign up and, and be a part of it, but they got to kind of screen you. So they pick and choose who they're going to allow. That's the trick bag. You just can't automatically become a community notes um, a moderator or contributor. They have to allow you. And that's where the gatekeeping comes in. That's where the gatekeeping comes in. They allow some of their fellow travelers to do it. And they act like it's neutral. So that's why whenever we black people post something, it gets community noted. They put some kind of weird context. And a lot of times they'll just lie. Whereas when they say something that's completely false, we can't community note their stuff. They don't let us become community note contributors. The other day, I posted a tweet that went viral of a white cop up in Vallejo beating this sister, socking this sister in the face. There's no justification to sock this sister in the face. They put a community note. Well, to put more context on it, the woman was accused of shoplifting. Okay, that doesn't justify hitting the woman in the face. Because what community note they didn't put, the cop who did it, he's known in the area and he has a record for attacking and assaulting black people. In fact, that same cop was involved in a high profile murder of a black person who was sleeping in his car in the same area a, a, a year or so ago. They didn't put that in the community notes. That's the racial bias of it. You see, that's the racial bias. So now, Elon Musk, now that they're allowing these suspected white supremacists to run the community notes, he put this up, making a slight change for creator monetization. Any posts that are corrected by community notes becomes ineligible for revenue share. The idea is to maximize the incentive for accuracy over sensationalism. All right. That is, ladies and gentlemen, them trying to censor us. That's them trying to censor us. Worth noting that any attempts to weaponize community notes to demonize people will immediately obvious will be immediately obvious because all code and data is open source. Stop that. Stop that. 
they already know that it's already rigged so that the 4chan crowd, they get allowed to post community notes and to make whatever context they want to make. It's all about I'm white and I say so. This is basically Elon Musk is giving them the green light to do the I'm white and I say so law to target black folks on here. That's what it is. They're going to do I'm white and I say so. And these people are getting so damn desperate with I'm white and I say so. That's the only play they have to make. It's I'm white and I say so. Um, we see the I'm white and I say so rule implemented all the time. I just saw a movie. Um, was I, I, I couldn't even get through the whole movie. I was getting pissed off. Called Silver Silver Dollar Road. I think that's the name of it. About these um, this family out there in um, North Carolina. They had all of this acreage of land generations in their family and the white supremacists working to rip them off their land and to steal their land. Um, some of the family members were put in jail for trespassing on their own land because, yeah, the, the city and the state and all of these unscrupulous lawyers and people are coming around trying to finesse these people off their land, trying to steal their land, which is common practice. And they did the, the, all the things that they normally do. They did the whole, the whole permit thing. Oh, y'all don't have the right permits. That's where they get us. They're doing us with the that. They're doing that to us with the museum now. That's that's the age old trick. Oh, there's a certain permit you gotta have. Oh, you're doing this. You gotta get a certain permit. Ah, there's a certain permit that you gotta. They get us with the permits. The whole permit hustle. We're going through that literally right now with the Hidden History Museum. So they were hitting them with the whole permit thing. And then, oh man, just all types of paperwork scams. I'm white and I say so paperwork scams. Um, but the white not, I, the I'm white and I say so rule is highly in effect. They did something like that with the game, with the Colorado game, with the Shadour, with um, um, Deion Sanders' son. They Didn't they eject? His son from the game, they said he did some kind of targeting play. I didn't watch the game, but I heard about it. They ejected um, Shadur Sanders out of the game, right? Because they said he he was targeting. It's, I'm white and I damn say so. Okay? Oh, yeah, the Killers of the Flower Moon. I got that book. That was another I'm white and I say so thing where the whole town was in on getting these Native Americans finessing them out of their um, the millions of dollars that they got. It was Shiloh. Okay, it was Shiloh. Okay, it was Shiloh. Yeah. Yeah, they ejected Shiloh. And they said he targeted somebody, right? Basically, it was a clean hit. It was just a, just a clean hit. He hit him. It was a clean hit. And they immediately targeted him and said that, hey, yeah, nope, nope. You got to get up out. He did a clean hit and they pulled the I'm white and I say so and said, oh, ejection. You know? And from what I saw, it was a clean hit. And they let athletes like Grayson Allen talk about him all the time. That white boy, Grayson Allen, who's a basketball player, who's got to be like one of the dirtiest players in the league. This guy, man, this guy assaults people on the basketball court. And they sat there and they, they turned a blind eye to Grayson Allen for years. No, this dude, Grayson Allen, was infamous for doing these dirty-ass plays and officials just looked the other way about it. Yeah? So now they're saying because it was his celebration after the hit. Okay, so Man. So, yeah, they, they moved the goalposts. Now they're saying that it was because he celebrated after the hit. They said he showboated after the hit. Stop. Yeah, even with the Tyson Fury, the boxing match he had, this brother was beating the brakes out of him. They were letting Tyson Fury get away with little hits like this. Look at this. Tyson Fury hit this dude with a dirty elbow. They didn't even call this. Hold on. Hold on. And this is what Ronaldo hold on, hold on. Look at this. Oh, an elbow. 
the back end of that. Dude, that wasn't even called. And they still let that dude win. And, and the, the, the African brother ate that. That didn't even phase him. But just the fact that they let him throw dirty elbows in there. That brother was beating the brakes off Tyson Fury, man. And they still gave it to Tyson Fury. They still used our white and I say so rule. Okay? So these people, man, they're doing these desperate plays. These are Hail Mary plays when they get into this, this blatant I'm white and I say so thing. Because they, they feel like they're losing power, the white supremacists. They 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 feel like they're going extinct. They don't know what to do. There was a situation, I, I saw this, and my sister Nikki the God posted this on her social media. Shout out to Nikki the God. There was this woman, speaking of digital racism, you know, you even if you order food and you're not even interacting with people. You got a phone app where you can order food. You got black people saying, you know what? I don't want to deal with no racism. I don't even want to go to a restaurant because they might discriminate against me at a restaurant. I don't want to go there. I just want to eat. I'm at home. Let me use the digital app where I can just order food where I ain't got to deal with no racism. I don't want to go to no restaurant and they sit me in the back and they're taking their time to come serve me and there's a racist waitress I, I, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to have to drive anywhere. I might get pulled over. Let me just stay home and order my food. Not only do you want to meet the people who deliver my food, I just want them to drop the food off at the door. I just want to be safe in my house. I don't want to interact with nobody. You don't have to see me. Just drop the food off. You get your money. You go on about your business. So this is a situation where, obviously, this, this is a woman, I don't know what city this is in. This white supremacist delivers a food uh, a food order to this sister. And I guess the sister must have had a black name. So the white supremacist woman is just standing outside the door taking a picture and just mumbling the word nigga. All right? The woman is just, hold on. So this is desperate ra racism right here. Hold on. The woman is upset for no reason at all. Now look at look at this. She saw she sees that the woman's name is black, so the woman is all types of niggas and the woman never interacted with this white lady at all. Look at this. Experiencing a racist door dasher. Nobody got a name like that at that age. Hold on, let me play that again. Ain't nobody else got that name at that age. So the the, the woman must have had a name, like a black sounding name. Mind y'all, I never spoke with her, never seen her or anything. Okay, so this white supremacist woman is just mad literally for no reason. Oh, no, it wasn't about no tip. No, it wasn't about no tip. She's the F you, F you. It wasn't about no tip. It must have been Shaquetta or something like that. That's why on on some of these food apps, I don't I never use my name. I use all types of initials. I don't use my name. Um, you know what that was really about? Because this woman is just mad for just mad simply because the woman is black. The woman, the black woman never interacted with her. This is what I want black people to understand. It ain't about what you do, it's just about your existence. You think that you gotta shuck and jive and 
appease these people. It's never about what you do. It's never about what you do. Um, D. Tubman and Nikki, can y'all find the video? There's a video of a black man who was in the military. He was getting gas and some random white supremacist is up here trying to um, get at him about having sneakers on with this military outfit. Can y'all find that video clip for me real quick? Nikki and um, D. Tubman, if you're in here, in War Talks. I want to I make a point about that, too. If y'all can find the video, there's a video clip of this brother. He was getting gas. He's in the military. And some random white man was like, yeah, you don't have such and such on trying to regulate on him. Please find me that clip real quick if you can. I know some of y'all probably seen it. But let me tell you some uh, about that DoorDash clip, what the real problem is. Um... This woman is just mad for no reason at a black woman. Black woman didn't do anything to you. That woman didn't do anything to her, didn't even interact with her. But she's pissed. You know why she's pissed? Because she's a low-level white supremacist. Look like she's on meth or something. And low-level white supremacists, all they have is the ideology of white supremacy, meaning that they're supposed to be better than a black person. So... If you, a low-level white supremacist, are now delivering food to a black person, if you are a low-level white supremacist, that messes with you. Just the fact that you, as a white woman, you feel like you're reduced to have to deliver food to a black woman who pretty much probably stays in a pretty decent apartment. Yeah, the apartment complex looks kind of nice. Eh? So just the fact that you are reduced in your mind to having to deliver food to this black woman, now you got to stand outside her door mumbling, nigga, 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 here, nigga, nigga, nigga. That's your own insecurities. And let me be real. Yeah, that's eating her up. And let me tell you something, because I've had food delivered. Family, if you had food delivered to your house, some of these people, they've given you that energy. I felt that energy before. I felt that energy from some people from the dominant society. They come give them, give me food and they come look at the house and they're like looking at me kind of with an attitude like, here's your food, sir. And I'm looking at the food like, okay, all right. That kind of messes with them. I can feel it. I felt that from certain people. When they feel like, hey, I got to, you know, as a white supremacist, I got to deliver food to this Negro. I have to serve him. Y'all better understand how white supremacy works, man. They, they trip on that. These people are very insecure. They're very, very insecure. Dude, I had one dude who, who came and delivered food, and I told y'all about this before. This dude had like some rocker gear on and had kind of an alt-right hairstyle, and he delivered my food. And there's a lot of times people deliver my food. There's a lot of black people, and they'll know who I am, you know. Oh, shit, I didn't know it was Tyreek. Hey, what's up, Tyreek? You know, sometimes they'll know who I am. So I don't trip, but this this rocker white dude came and delivered my food one time. And he's like, oh, hey, Tyreek. Hey, watch your stuff all the time, man. Love your stuff, dude. Oh, shit, okay. I got that food of trash. I'll do that shit right in the garbage. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. This dude knew who I was and he looked kind of alt-right-ish. It's a no for me. Yeah, I'm not eating that. Oh, I'm not eating that. I'm not eating that at all. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, that's that's it right there. Good, good. Thank you, Nikki. Let me let me get that. Let me get that real quick. Hold on. What, 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 what? Let me grab it real quick. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me grab that real quick. Thank you, Nikki the God, for bringing that up. But yes, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you got to play it safe. Sometimes you got to play it safe out here. But yeah, there's a lot of, when um, the black folks show up, they know who I am a lot of times. They're real cool. They're real, real cool. Um, sometimes, even the non-FBA people, and I got to be weary with them sometimes because sometimes they'll know who I am. And I'm like, you know, hopefully Umduge don't, don't 
try to sabotage me. Hey, what up, Tariq? I want. Do you think I'm a tether nigga? Oh, okay. I want them to pull that. You know, nigga. Sometime out here, you know, this California. Sometime have have y'all had like some low key fine girls who are DoorDash workers? Nigga, sometimes I didn't had a couple of dimes pull up delivering food, and they know who I am. And they be kind of giving a nigga the eye. <laughs> oh, 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 here's your Chipotle. Oh, it's Tariq. Hey, Tariq. I didn't know this is your house. You got a nice house, Tariq. <laughs> Thank you. Look at all my peanut. <laughs> Did my lady sleep? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Hold on. They've been on the chat for a minute. I'm like, hold on, ma'am. You're going to get me in good trouble. Hold up. Yeah, they're awesome. I've seen them. I'm like, hey, what you doing delivering food? Yeah, I've seen a couple of fine ones. Like, hold on now. Hold on. And some of them know they're fine. That's why they start, they want to they wanna talk for a minute. Some of them, they're fine, and they know they're fine. They're like, hold on, nigga. Um, your crib kind of nice. A bitch could probably be up in here. Um, no, ma'am. It's all right. Yeah, ma'am, I'm, I'm cool, ma'am. I'm good, ma'am. Yeah, they get to, I'm in a bind. <laughs> yeah, they get to choosing a little bit. Like, hey. Can you save me? Like, no, ma'am. Thank you for the buffalo wings. Thank you for the buffalo wings, ma'am. And I, I, I really appreciate you. Then they walk off shaking that ass. <laughs> they, they walk off like Gloria in Waiting to Exhale. <laughs> really shaking that ass real hard. You know, trying to show out a little bit. Like, ma'am, you're trying to get an extra tip. You know? But let me play this. This is another clip here where you, the, the, the white supremacists feel like they can just kind of pull up on us and kind of regulate. Now, this brother right here has on sneakers or whatever. Some random dude runs up on him trying to check him for what he has on and what he don't have on. Man, black folks, listen. Man, stop! You, we ain't gotta explain nothing to these random people like we're on a like a slave patrol. We ain't gotta explain nothing to random damn people, man. Hold on, look at this. Hold on. Stolen valor at its finest. He doesn't have his cat card. Can you call any staff sergeant? This guy's not a soldier. He's here for military discounts. Take that flag off, bro. Military discount. This is. Nowhere. Have a good day. Is Thompson, do you got a brother or something? No, no, no. I don't know how you think this. I don't know. 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 I don't Man, stop explaining to these damn people, man. Like a slave patrol, we got to show your freedom papers. I would have told that dude to go straight to damn hell. Going to come up and try to check somebody about their paperwork or, or, or their military service. Man, get the hell out of here. We got to start letting folks know, man, we ain't got to start explaining shit to no random people. Everybody wants to act like the police with us. Check these people, man. Don't let these people run that game on us. The hell out of here. But man, also, um, there's something that we got to watch out for. They got this new bill that they trying to, speaking of Michigan, they got this thing out here in Michigan. I call this the buck breaking bill. bill. They got this bill. Listen, look at this bill here. A bill banning gay trans panic defense advances in Michigan. 
Michigan is closer to outlawing the use of a person's sexuality or gender as an excuse for harming them. A bill banning gay panic or the transgender panic defense is advancing. Currently, a person accused of a crime can claim a victim's sexuality, gender expression, or gender contributed to the crime. This could include a suspect saying they acted in self-defense self after receiving unwanted advances from an LGBTQ plus person. Okay. Basically, what they're trying to do is protect dudes who basically try to rape straight men. If you're with somebody who you think is a woman and they pull a, 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 a slong out on you, hey, 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 get away from me with that. If they try to run up in you and you defend yourself, hey, get off me. Yeah. They're saying now that's a crime. If you say, hey, I don't want you pushing up on me. Family, this is, this is the buck breaking thing. I've been telling y'all, it's going to buck breaking. This is where it's all going. That's why I did the movie Buck Breaking a few years ago. I told y'all that's where this was going. This was all about you being defenseless when somebody tries to dominate you sexually. They're trying to make it so you can't fight back. That's just like in slavery. In slavery, when they made sexual advances, we couldn't fight back. We would get punished if we didn't want to get raped by slave owners and damn overseers. You dig? So now, yeah, if some dude tries to run up on you and kiss you, just like it with Genuine, if a dude runs up on you and tries to kiss you in your damn mouth, like, hey, man, fuck off. Now, you just committed a crime. Now, you committed a crime because now you've attacked him based on his gender identity. I told y'all that's where this was going. So now, if you go to, if Dwight Howard invites you over to play a game of pool. <laughs> like, yeah, we're going to have a boys' night out, man. Yeah, we're going to have a, a, a boys' outing. Yeah, Dwight Howard's house. We're going to go over there and play a little pool as men. And then you you bent over at the pool table, and then you feel another pool stick behind you, and then you throw an elbow. Hey, brother, what, what you doing? Hey. I thought we were just hanging out as players, man. What's this up? What are you doing? Now, you just committed a crime. Remember, that's what they, allegedly the dude in the lawsuit against Dwight Howard, the dude was like Dwight Howard was forcing dude to do shit. Yeah, basically, it's the you can't say no bill. Not no means no. With us, no, you can't say no. Hell no, I knew this is where this bullshit was going. That That's buck breaking. It's going into buck breaking. Dude, when you can't harm somebody, you can't say that you acted in self-defense after receiving unwanted advances. Hell, what if I don't want a nigga raping me? What If you don't want a dude trying to oil me up and get down on me, I can't. I can't defend my shit. Damn that. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. If a dude try to run up on you sexually, you can't get a nigga off you. That's what they're saying. I knew that's where they were going with this stuff. I knew that's exactly where they were going. I, I told y'all years ago. They're trying to set it up so that if somebody wants to get at you sexually, you can't fight them off. It's buck breaking all over again, man. That's why we're going to be doing a buck breaking too. That's going to be coming. The laws out here are insane. It is insane out here. But we got a lot of folks in the house, a lot of folks in the building. Listen, family, everybody, we got a lot of folks in here. Everybody need to hit that Kickstarter for the movie um, uh, Microphone Check. Y'all need to hit that Kickstarter while we're here. 
um, for the Kickstarter. We need to get to 180. And right now we're at 126. Everybody hit the Kickstarter. Let me show y'all where we are right now. This is the Kickstarter for the new movie Microphone Check. We're at 126. We need to get to 180, family. It's very important that we get to that 180 because, man, we got to tell our story. We got to tell our history because right now these people are going out of their way to erase our history. Right now, um, they got hip hop coming to the Olympics. They got break dancing coming to the Olympics. And they've been trying to erase our um, creations of it. Somebody sent me this right here. They, um, they got a couple of Latino cats going to the Olympics right here. Red Bull athlete and Red Bull, and they're talking about going to the Olympics. These are some, they're going to be in the B-Boy competition. All right. Now, Red Bull, this is another guy right here. Olympic athlete, a Red Bull athlete, a B-Boy. Now, remember, Red Bull was pushing this whole narrative that Puerto Ricans actually started breakdancing. Remember, I put up an article from Red Bull where well, Red Bull was actually putting up an article talking about Puerto Ricans started up rocking, which was the precursor to breakdancing, which is horse crap. Red Bull is pushing this, and Red Bull has a strong presence at the Olympics. These are the, they call the Red Bull teams. We're showing you how the corporate structure, they're involved with erasing our history family. This is why Red Bull was pushing that Puerto Ricans really started it. So this is what we're up against, guys. This is why us, the grassroots, it is up to us. It is up to us. It is up to us. B-Boy Morris, he's on the um, um, the team. Okay, shout out to B-Boy Morris. But family, yeah, we got 54K to go. We can get 50. We can get that tonight. Because listen, man. It's so important that we do this on the grassroots, man. Hip hop is all about grassroots. And this whole lie about them Puerto Ricans started some damn break dancing, that is a damn lie. Even the term break dancing, it comes from us breaking it down at the break of a record. When, the, when we used to dance to funk records, funk records a lot of times had a real funky breakdown. And when the funky breakdown happened, we start turning up. Sometimes we start hitting the floor. If you look at old episodes of Soul Train and they play records or they play songs that's real funky, whenever the song broke down, them Soul Train dancers would start hitting the ground and doing all of these acrobatics. That's been something that we've been doing. That's 100% from foundational Black American culture. Literally nothing to do with no Puerto Ricans or anything. And that's not a diss. Puerto Ricans came later. We have to tell the truth about our narrative. And let me tell you something. A lot of these guys who, we got the movie coming out and there's a lot of people who have been, they've been complaining. Oh man, y'all should have talked to the Puerto Ricans. No, let me tell you something. I don't want to hear none of that. Because the, the Derek Colognes and all of these people, they've been very vocal now. Let me tell you something. When we were doing the film, I went to New York I was looking for all of these 50-50 Puerto Ricans. I was looking for them. All right? When I went to New York, I was looking for the 50-50 Puerto Ricans. I was looking all over for them. So I don't want nobody to hop online now. Don't I, All of that shit they're doing is cat. Well, you should have talked to such and such. You, you should have talked to this Puerto Rican. I don't want to hear none of that. I don't want to hear all of this Puerto Ricans I should have talked to. When I was out there filming, I was going back and forth to New York on a regular basis. When I was filming out there, nobody would holler at me. I was asking around, where are these 50-50 people? Let me talk to some pioneers. Derek Colon, and I know you're watching Derek Colon. I said, Derek, are you in New York right now? I'm in New York. Where are you at? Well, I'm in Florida. I live in Florida now. And I let them know, I can come down there. I can come down there and holler at you. But while I'm in New York, throw some names at me. Who? Do, where's Crazy Legs? I want to talk to Crazy Legs. Um, since y'all prop him up, well, Crazy Legs is in Jersey. Give him my number. 
I'm looking for people. I'm in New York looking. And nobody was reaching out. And they all in their little chat rooms, well, you should have went. There was a party at Katona Park or whatever. How come you didn't go there? No, I'm not going to no random fucking party. I'm, I'm doing a movie. I got a film crew with me. Show me where the pioneers are so I can sit down with them. I'm not just going to go to a random concert. No, y'all trying to get me to spin my wheels. No, and look, well, I'm going to go to a concert and look for Puerto Ricans? The fuck you talking about? Tell me who the pioneers are who are Puerto Rican and let me go holler at them. I, I, I'm not trying to make this a one-sided thing. I want to talk to some of these pioneers who are Puerto Ricans. They're twiddling their thumbs. You think? Know? I don't want to hear none of this stuff. I'm looking for them. So Derek Colon, I, I gave Derek my number. He was like, well, you can talk to such and such out there in the Bronx. Give them my number. They never reached out to me. I hit Derek. Where's, and he's telling me all of these people, one of his, his partners who's always in the comment section trolling and all of that. I, hey, let that dude holler at me. I'm in the Bronx. Let him holler. I'm like, Derek, where's your guy? Well, um, they said they wanted you to, Talk to them at a boxing gym where some other pioneers are going to be. Okay, where where's this gym? Where, where's this gym? Where Wherever. Okay, where? They never hit me up, never told me about where none of these people were. I'm over here in Rosedale. And I let them know, hey, man, I'm over in Rosedale Park. Well, you were on the black side. You weren't over here on this side of the Bronx. Wherever. I could be wherever. So they were ducking and dodging about these damn 50-50 pioneers. And even Derek Cologne. Now, Derek Cologne, I said that, well, I would like to get your perspective. And he agreed to be in it. I said, Derek, I would like to get your perspective. I don't want this thing to be one-sided. If there's some other contributors, if y'all I would present all of your receipts. I would love it. Yeah, I'll be down. I'm down. Yeah, yeah, I'm down. So Derek Cologne was down. I said, dude, I can come to Florida. He's, he's close to Orlando. I said, okay, look, dude, let's do it. He agreed. I said, cool. In fact, my kids been wanting to go back to Disney World. So I'm going to take them down there. So he agreed, and we're planning on going down to Florida to interview Derek Cologne. And then he, every day... Before I go down there, or before I, you know, my, my flight is to go down there, Derek Cologne, every day, he's hitting me up with more shit. Yeah, if you do the interview, can I bring such and such from Rocksteady Crew? Sure. Bring them. Then he hit me up the next day. If, yeah, if you interview me, can I have such and such MC Goya Powder to come through? He's one of the first rappers. Okay, bring MC Goya Powder, whoever. Bring them. Every other day, he's asking to bring somebody else. Can I have such and such from the, 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 the such and such gang to come to? Yeah, yes. Whoever. Yeah, he's now he's starting to stall. He's throwing little shit out there. So, and Derek, you know I'm telling the truth, Derek Cologne. You know I'm telling the truth. So now, then he'll email, call the next day. Um, um. Now, where are we going to meet up now? It don't matter. I can go to you. You can go to me. Nigga, we can meet at Peppa Pig land. I don't give a damn. However you want to do it. However, you, you, you now you stalling. Yeah, he's trying to back out now. Then, then he'll hit me up. Can I see the questions that's going to be asked? All right, here's the questions. Yeah, so I ain't about to hit you with a curveball. Here's the questions. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Can, can Charlie Chase, because Charlie Chase is down here, can he come too? Yes. Then hit me up. Can I see the release form? Can I take a look at the release form? Yeah, here's the release form. Now, he's the only, body, the only person doing this bullshit. I sent him the release form. It's real cut and dry. But he's just looking for something. Then, can I bring my own film crew and film, no, you can't do that. No, you cannot do that. No, you absolutely can't do that. Now, that's a trick bag. Now, he's he wanted to bring another film crew 
No. No. See, that's colonizer shit right there. Yeah. Somebody said, yeah, can he bring the street corn Cubans? <laughs> so, yeah, he wanted to bring another film. No, you can't do that because then, yeah, you'll try to have our film tied up in all types of litigation. Hell no, you can't do that. Oh, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. So he's he's just doing a whole bunch of shit, and then we, we're getting ready to go down there. Then he hit me up. I'm sorry, Tariq. I, I can't do it, man. Uh, you know, I got my reasons, but I'm just going, I, I can't do it. Uh, I'm sorry. I can't do it. I got my reasons. I said, okay, all right, man. All right, cool, whatever. All right, all right this my like All right. Okay. So now we, we're filming. We're doing our thing. We're filming. We, we, you know, I'm going back and forth to New York, doing my thing, filming everybody. And he's always chiming in all on my social media. Every time I interview somebody, well, why, why, why are you interviewing that person? Why are you in? Why are you interviewing Lord Jamar? Lord Jamar from New Rochelle, man. I, I, Cologne, be quiet, dude. Cologne, I, I don't want to hear nothing you got to say, man. So a couple of weeks go by, he hit me back up. Hey, Tyreek, I, I thought about it. I thought about it. And you know what? I, I really want to be a part of it. I, I, I think it's important. My voice needs to be heard. I, I said, dude, you, you flaking out, man. I'm sorry, dude. You on some flake shit. You, you, I don't know what you up to, man. I don't know what you doing, dude. But hey. Um, we're almost done with the film. I only got a few more cities to go to. No, no, I really want to do it, Tyree. No, I, I, you know, you know, I thought about it. You know, I had to talk it over with my wife and everything. And, you know, I really think it's important, man. I really want to do it now. I really want to do it. I really want to do it, Tyree. Man, I do. So I'm ignoring him. And he keeps hitting me up about how he really wants to do it. I really want to do it, Tyree. I said, look, okay, look, because I'm flying down to Texas. So I'm, 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 we're going to be traveling. We're going to be traveling. Then I was going to plan to go to Atlanta. So I said, look, I, I got to go down to Texas and film, possibly Atlanta. You ride in Florida. I said, okay, would you be available on this day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm available on that day. I'm available on that day. All right, I said, all right, look, uh, do you, are you sure? Are you good? Everything is good. You good? You sure you, you're down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm down. Yeah, I'm down. All right. All right. So now we scheduled him again. No, we. I scheduled him again. Even though he flaked, I scheduled him again. He kept going, badgering me. He wanted to, I'll say, all right, we'll do, okay. We'll schedule it again. I go to Texas. We'll leave Texas and go there. And then I go to Atlanta and my other cities. So this time, we're down in Texas. We actually book a flight from Texas to Orlando. So my, me and my camera crew, we booked the flight. Right before we about to leave, he hits me up. I, I, I can't do it, man. My wife is tripping. I, I can't do it, Tyreek. My wife is tripping. I really can't do it. I said, man, if you don't get the fuck on, dude. Man, get off my, f man. Dude, you bullshitting. So now I have to go and hurry up and cancel the flights now. Luckily, I got all of my money back because we booked at the last minute, which was good because we were able to cancel our flight and get our money back immediately. So I had to go cancel the flights to get me and my film crew's money back. He started blaming it on his wife. No, no, Tyree, see, I, I got to make sure that I'm going to be safe. I, I, it, it, it's a safety thing. My, my wife is concerned about my safety, and I don't want to get harmed. I said, Cologne, you think I'm going to come down there and beat you up? Don't you have cancer or something? No, I don't have cancer no more. I don't have cancer, but uh, uh, I just don't, uh, you know, people have been threatening me. People have been threatening me online. And I just don't want to be hurt. I don't want nothing to happen to me. You think I'm going to beat you up? You think I'm going to fly down there and beat you up? What the fuck are you talking about? I swear to God this dude was on some whole shit. This dude was on some whole shit, man. 
Dude, I don't respect nothing this dude has to say. You know, because this dude, you know, it's it's as a man, lying online is one thing, but you can't sit up there and lie to a dude's face. You know, as a man, you already feel a certain way about that. And when you look at Kelowna, he does these videos. You notice all of these little um, twitches that he does, these little um, subliminal um reactions that he always playing with his glasses when he talks you know that's the way that's what motherfuckers do when they lying when you're lying you have some kind of micro expression to try to cover your lie on a subconscious basis you dig because he know he's lying. he's he's a pathological damn liar so you know when he's always talking so yeah the, and always fixing his glasses oh notice that that's a, that's some subconscious trying to straighten up after a lie when you lie you always have a fear of being caught, and if you fear of being caught, when you do something deceptive, you kind of try to straighten up to look as normal as possible. You got to, on a subconscious level, try to fix yourself so you don't look like a liar. So he's always doing the messing with his glasses in this video. See, for Puerto Ricans were there in the beginning. In the beginning of hip-hop, we were always there. You see, the black is not a black thing. You know, hip hop is not a black thing. It's not. It, it's all of us were there, and in fact, uh, the blacks got it from the Puerto Ricans, because the Puerto Ricans started up rocking first, and the blacks got it from the up, all that fidgeting, messing with his glasses. That's that body language showing that. Let me straighten up after I keep lying. See, the, the breakdown in music, I, I call it a Latin breakdown, is because they're using a lot of Latin percussions, and that right there shows that there's a Latin influence in hip-hop, okay? Shut the fuck up, man. I don't want to hear none of that cap. I don't want to hear none of all that capping, because when it was time to really say that bullshit in, in my face, you were scared to do it. Huh? Well, When it was time to, to, to break the truth down, tell me your truth, you couldn't do it. It's hard lying in a dude's face. Yeah? It's hard to tell a lie in a dude's face. You got to stand on it. Yeah? Man. Yeah, he's the Latino version of Dane Calloway. That's a that big, fat, phony nigga. <laughs> That's another bitch ass. Yeah, and then he gonna try to blame his wife. You know what I mean? Talking about we got some, boy, the, the lies. This dude, and he's a school teacher. That's the thing. That's the thing with Derek Cologne. He's a school teacher. So kids got to be subjected to his bullshit. Talking about the break beats is a Latin, it's called the Latin breakdown. He done made up a term with no damn Latin breakdown. Yeah, all of the break beats, if you notice, they had bongos in them. And, and the bongo shows that there was a Latin influence. Like Jane Brown had bongos. Bongos is not exclusive to the Latin community. Stop it. What, no Latins in James Brown's band? Even the incredible bongo band, the, the, the hip-hop theme song is um, like Apache. That's a very... Uh, one of the sisters in the um, in, uh, the Incredible Bongo Band was a sister out of Detroit, um, uh, Bobby Hall, the foundation of Black American woman. Bongos ain't exclusive to Latin culture. We we played bongos over here. The same sister, she was um, she played on a lot of Motown records. In fact, Bobby Hall, that was a sister playing on Marvin Gaye's record, um, um, Inner City Blues. You look at the Marvin Gaye What's Going On album, there's a lot of bongos in that. We were playing bongos in that. We 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 we, we just got that flavor. It didn't got nothing to do with no damn Latin. Yeah, listen to um Inner City Blues, Marvin Gaye. Listen to the bongos. Black sister, foundational black American woman playing those bongos. Yeah? Nothing to do with no damn Latin. Just because you hear a bongo now, they're saying that a bongo is Latin. If you hear a bongo in a funk record, oops, Latin, Latin, Latino, they got it from, they were influenced by a Latino. Yeah, the bongos are African, if you want to go there. Yeah, we played bongos and congos. 
congas that comes from the African nation, the Congo. Eh? It's still black. We're still talking black stuff. But these people, man, this, this film microphone check has these people losing their damn minds, family. This film has these folks losing their damn minds because they know the truth is going to come out and it's coming from a grassroots source, which is what hip hop is. Hip hop has always been grassroots. I was having a debate with some dude the other day, some undercover tether, and he was trying to say, well, well, white people control hip hop and white people and the Jews control hip hop. No, they don't. No, the white people control the music industry, but the music industry, white people don't control hip hop. Hip hop is our culture. Hip hop by definition is anti-establishment. That's why it was created. Hip hop itself is a grassroots entity. A lot of the corporate structure they take from our grassroots entities and try to flip it and amalgamate it into what they have corporately, but they don't control what we do on the streets. Hip hop is foundational black American grassroots culture. And the great thing about hip hop is that it always does reinventions within the culture. It does reinventions within the culture. You dig? So when one entity of hip hop becomes too corporate, then we go back underground, create something else underground, and then when that catches steam and then it, get corp it gets corporatized, then we'll create something else that we can bring back underground. <clears throat> like um, the drill music, you know, that was kind of an underground thing, then it got corporatized. Um, just certain elements. When certain elements gets too corporate, we go back and, and, and hit the drawing board. When a dance gets too corporatized, we go back. You think we'll create another dance? Yeah. If one dance get hot and it gets too corporate, then we'll we will create crumping. All right. Then we'll create the duggy. We we know how to create dances. We know how to create certain things within hip hop. We know how to create separate rhyming styles. We'll create another rhyming style. Yeah. But we have so many different things that we can create within hip hop culture. And it all comes from foundational black American culture. Yeah, battle rap, the whole shebang. Yeah. Crunk music, yeah. So there's different variations of hip hop. Uh, trap music, crunk music, bounce music out of New Orleans. We got our own flavor. Yeah. The West Coast hip hop. Hyphy. We come up with something totally different up there in the Bay. You dig? The, the, um, what's my dude's name out there? Um, what was my guy's name out there in Houston or out there in Texas? Screw. The DJ Screw. The Chopped and Screw sound. We'll create a whole different lane with it. We have different elements. The G-Funk, right. We, we create different elements of it within the culture. Yeah, we're so creative. Yeah, then go go out there in DC, different regions. You dig? And we can appreciate all of it. Miami base. Yeah. Yeah, we create different elements of it. Yeah. And then the fast raps that was kind of popular out of Chicago with Twister and, and people like that. Yeah. So this is all foundational black American culture. Yeah. So we got to let people know that we are the progenitors of that. And we got to stop being ashamed to let people know this stuff. Got to stop being ashamed to let people know this. Yeah. And speaking of foreigners, did y'all see this story? Well, this dude, he's a, a British dude. They, they said he's some kind of influencer on TikTok, a British TikTok influencer. This dude here, um, he's an influencer on TikTok. 
Um, I don't know who this dude is. Do my, my British people know who he is? So this is this guy. He's an influencer on TikTok. So this dude tried to come to the United States through Peru. He went down to Peru. And the dude tried to bring some birds back. The dude tried to bring some weight over. He tried to smuggle some weight from Peru. So the nigga went down there and got some Peruvian. That Peruvian ain't no joke. He didn't even go to Colombia. My dude went down there to Peru. And this is a non-FBA tether. And he tried to smuggle it to the United States. And got caught. And now he's acting surprised that he got caught. This dude got caught. And he went to the airport. Glammed the hell up. Now this is him. He's, well, oh, hold on. This fool went to the airport, and that's them going in his bag, and he's bucking his eyes. This nigga went to the airport with bleach blonde hair and a whole bunch of moist clothes sticking out like a sore thumb and then acting surprised that he got caught. Nigga, stop. This nigga went to the airport dressed like Jada Pinkett, and now he's sitting here bucking his eyes that he got caught. Look at this fool. <laughs> Really, dude? What, what is this shit? What is this shit, nigga? Oh, oh, what is this? That is not mine. What is that shit? Why are you bucking your eyes, nigga? That nigga had two big birds in that bag. Dude, oh no, what is that? Don't do all that now. The hell you go to the airport dressed like that for, fool? That's not how you trap. Up there, fake confusion. Nigga, that's not how you, you don't go to transport dressed like that, fool? Dude. You went to the airport sticking out like a sore thumb and then acting shocked that you your birds then got flipped over. <laughs> nigga, you supposed to be low-key, nigga. You supposed to be invisible. Nigga, if you got two birds in your damn suitcase, nigga, you supposed to blend in with everybody. These fools don't even know how to trap right. Nigga, you trying to get some attention and trap? Nigga, they gonna have their way with you in that damn Peruvian jail, dude. Man, fool. <laughs> Lord, you already in a in a foreign country sticking out. You're supposed to blend in, man. Lord. These folks be doing the damn most. But anyway, man, listen, listen, listen. We got almost 6,000 people in here. Everybody, can you go to the link below? Everybody go to the link below. We got to reach our goal. We got to get a little over 50K in five days, family. A little over 50K in five days. We only got five days to make it happen, family. We're at 127 right now. We got to get a little over 50K. We got five days to do it for this monumental historic piece grassroots family let's make this happen ladies and gentlemen anyway man i thank everybody for tuning in um you guys have a great week puppy akute and lola bube to the family and again go to microphonecheck.com microphonecheck.com all right y'all have a great